in today's lecture we will be discussing generating functions we have already discussed in our previous lecture the idea of a discrete numeric function. We recall that if we have the set of natural numbers 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on and the set of real numbers then any function from n to r is called a discrete numeric function. Now, we have also seen that a discrete numeric function is written in a somewhat different form than a than an uh, usual function uh, that is we write it in form of a sequence we write uh, in print we write a bold letter small a otherwise we may write a and put an underline on a and this is a sequence a 0, a 1, a 2 dot dot a r and so on. It is understood that this a represents uh, the concerned discrete numeric function and a 0 is its value at the point 0, a 1 is its value at the point 1, a 2 is the value at the point 2 and so on. given a discrete numeric function like this we we can write a a power series type of expression which is called the generating function corresponding to the discrete numeric function the generating function corresponding to A is g x equal to a 0 plus a 1 a 1 x a 1 x plus a 2 x square plus and so on up to a r x to the power r plus and so on. In a compact notation we can write this as sigma r equal to 0 to infinity a sub r x to the power r. We will see that given generating functions 
we can add and uh, multiply by scalar and also we can mutually multiply the generating functions. So, suppose h x is another generating function corresponding to a discrete numeric function b which is the function having the values b 0, b 1 and so on. So, we get a generating function of this type or in our compact notation r from 0 to infinity b r x to the power r then addition is defined as h x plus g x equal to sigma r equal to 0 to infinity a r plus b r x to the power r. In other words, this is a 0 plus b 0 plus a 1 plus b 1 x plus a 2 plus b 2 x square moving onward to the general term a r plus b r x to the power r plus and so on. Now, if we remember the discussions on the previous lecture, we showed that generating functions can be added. So, if we have the generating function a 0, a 1, a 2, a r and so on and b as b 0, b 1 b 2 and so on the general term b r and so on. We have seen that the sum of the of these two discrete numeric functions is a 0 plus b 0 a 1 plus b 1 a r plus b r and so on and from what we have seen just now this discrete numeric functions generating function is h x plus g x. In the similar way we can define scalar multiplication by alpha which is an element of r. If we take a generating function h x then alpha times h x is simply alpha a 0 plus alpha times a 1 x plus alpha times a 2 x square and the general term alpha a sub r x to the power r and so on and so we see that this is corres cor this corresponds to the discrete numeric function alpha a 0 alpha a 1 alpha a 2 and uh, alpha a r and so on. Thus, we see that the operations on uh, generating functions correspond to the operations on discrete numeric functions uh, 
parallelly. Now, we define another operation on discrete uh, numeric function which is called convolution products. Now, if we take as before the discrete numeric function a and the discrete numeric function b, then the convolution of a and b is defined as a discrete numeric function given by a star b, let us say it is equal to c, where the elements of c are c 1, c 2, c uh, C, uh, C 0, C 1, C 2 and so on up to C r, where C r is A i B r minus i, i running from 0 to r. For example, we see that if r equal to 0, C 0 is A 0 B 0, C 1 is A 0 B 1, A 1 B 0, C 2 is A 0 B 2 plus A 1 B 1 plus A 2 B 0 and so on. Now, we ask that what is the corresponding operation on generating functions of these discrete numeric functions. Now, as, as we see that this operation is nothing but the product of the two generating functions. So, we take capital H x and capital G x as uh, the generating functions of B and A. So, uh, let us write a fresh suppose G x is equal to a 0 plus a 1 x plus a 2 x square plus a r x to the power r and h x is equal to b 0 plus b 1 x plus b 2 x square plus and so on b r x to the power r and so on. If we take the product g x into h x, g x into h x, then this is product of these two sequences a 0 a 1 x a 2 x square plus a r x to the power r plus and so on multiplied by b 0 plus b 1 x plus b 2 x square and so on b r x to the power r plus and so on. Now, this is equal to see the first term is by combining a 0 with b 0. So, I have got a 0 b 0 the second term is the the the, the indeterminate x along with the coefficient a 0 b 1 plus a 1 b 0 it goes like this. 
So, I have a 0 b 1 plus a 1 b 0 x, then the third term is a 2 b 2 sorry a 0 b 2 then a 1 b 1 plus a 2 b 0. All right, and so on, and we have to find the expression for the rth term. If we look closely, we will find that the expression of the rth term is the rth term sigma a i b r minus i i running from 0 to r. Thus, we see that the um, of course, uh, just uh, to be more specific this will be the rth term is uh, has x to the power r with it. So, the coefficient of the rth term is sigma a i b, b r minus i i runs from 0 to r. Therefore, we see that the coefficient of x to the power r in the product g x times h x is the convolution product of a and b now this product has several interesting applications the first application is uh, very useful in writing generating functions in compact closed forms. Now, we take two generating functions one is given by g x is equal to 1 minus x the other one is given by h x is equal to 1 plus x plus x square plus x cube and so on up to x to the power r and then onward. Now, if we multiply g x and h x then we get 1 minus x multiplied by 1 plus x plus x square plus x cube plus and so on up to x to the power r plus and so on. So, if I now multiply the first term 1 to all the terms in the second factor I will get 1 plus 1 into x x plus x square plus x cube plus plus and so on up to x to the power r and onward and then the second term of the first factor minus x is multiplied to the all, uh, to all the terms in the second factor and we obtain minus x minus x square minus x cube and so on minus x to the power r and so on. So, we see that there are many cancellations in fact, all the terms will cancel except 1 therefore, we will have 1 minus x 
into 1 plus x plus x square plus x to the power r plus and so on equal to 1 and therefore, we, we can write 1 plus x plus x square plus and so on up to x to the power r and so on as 1 minus x inverse because this infinite series 1 plus x plus x square plus x to the power r when multiplied by 1 minus x and in fact, we can check that the order does not matter it may be 1 minus x and this series or this series into 1 minus x in both the cases we get 1 therefore, this series is the inverse of 1 minus x and therefore, can be written as 1 minus x inverse and we can even write it as 1 minus 1 by 1 minus x. Here we see that we are not putting any numerical values in the place of x. So, these infinite series that we obtain as generating functions of discrete numeric functions are purely symbolic or formal. So, there is no concept of convergence that we get in real analysis. So, there is nothing called divergence, nothing called convergence. It is only important that these series should be well defined. That is, if, if you give me an r no matter how large, I should be able to compute the coefficient corresponding to the uh, to r in finite time and that is all what I need. Therefore, I can have an agreement of writing 1 plus x plus x square and so on as simply 1 upon 1 minus x. We see here that x is a pure symbol. So, x can be replaced by anything else and for example, if I took 3 x instead of x then I would have got x plus 3 x plus 3 x whole square plus and so on up to 3 x to the power r and so on this is equal to 1 minus 3 x. We can check that by multiplying uh, according to the rule of multiplication that we have defined. So, if we now process the left hand side of the equation, uh, we see that 1 minus 1 by 1 minus uh, 1 by 1 minus 3 x is uh, equal to 1 plus 3 times x plus 3 square times x square plus and so on up to 3 to the power r times x to the power r and so on. Therefore, we see that the generating function corresponding to the discrete numeric function 3 to the power 0 3, 3 square and so on, 3 to the power r and so on. Let us call this A, the generating function corresponding to this A is one upon one minus 3 x. Thus, we have seen how to get a 
generating function of a discrete numeric function in its closed form. Suppose, we were given this discrete numeric function v then could have written this expression as generating function and by using the rules that we have derived already we could have come up to this. We can now move on to another example of finding discrete numeric function corresponding to generating functions. So, let us look at this generating function, let us call it g x which is equal to 2 upon 1 minus 2 x 1 plus 2 x which is of course, equal to 2 upon 1 minus 4 x square. So, it is possible that somebody tells me that look there is a discrete numeric uh, there is a generating function g x which looks like this find out the discrete numeric function corresponding to this g x. For that we will first factorize the denominator and write in this form and then decompose it in terms of partial fractions. Let us do that 1 minus 2 x 1 plus 2 x if we decompose in terms of partial fractions then it will be like this a upon 1 minus 2 x plus b upon 1 plus 2 x and we have to find the values of a and b. So, we write 1 minus 2 x 1 plus 2 x and in the numerator it is a plus twice a x plus b minus twice b x. this is equal to now since this is an identity therefore, we must have a plus b equal to 0 and a minus b equal to 0. a minus b equal to 0 means a equal to b Uh, I am sorry this is not 0, but it is 2 because 
we must remember that this expression should be identically equal to 1 minus 2 x 1 plus 2 x. So, therefore, 2 is equal to a plus b and there is no x in the left hand side. So, the coefficient of x should be 0 therefore, I have got a minus b equal to 0 and a plus b equal to 2. So, from a minus b equal to 0 we have got a equal to b and therefore, from this equation it is clear that a equal to b equal to 1. Thus, we have the decomposition of 2 upon 1 minus 2 x 1 plus 2 x as 1 by 1 minus 2 x plus 1 by 1 plus 2 x. Now, by using our previous rule we can expand each of the terms of the right hand side into power series which will correspond to the generating function. So, it will be 1 plus 2 x plus 2 x whole square plus 2 x whole cube plus so on 2 x to the power r and so on and the other uh, term will give me 1 plus minus 2 x plus minus 2 x whole square and so on up and the rth term is minus 2 x raised to the power r and we can process it in this way we can write this is 1 plus 2 x plus 2 square x square and so on up to 2 to the power r x to the power r and onward and 1 plus minus 2 of x plus minus 2 square x square plus and so on plus minus 2 raised to the power r x to the power r and so on. So, the coefficient of the rth term for r greater than or equal to 0 is some c r equal to 2 to the power r plus minus 2 to the power r for all r greater than or equal to 0. Thus, the corresponding discrete numeric function is I write here some c which is equal to c 0, c 1, c r such that c r is 2 to the power r plus minus 2 to the power r for r greater than or equal to 0. Now, we will start discussing some more operations on generating functions. We have seen in case of discrete numeric functions that we have shift operations. Now, if we have 
a discrete numeric function a given by a 0 a 1 a 2 and so on a r like this then one right shift denoted by s a is the function 0 a 0 a 1 a 2 a r and so on. If we apply s square to a then we have two right shifts which is 0 0 a 0 a 1 and so on. Now, in case of generating functions it will be just multiplication by x. So, consider the generating function corresponding to a g x equal to a 0 plus a 1 x plus a 2 x square plus a r x to the power r and so on. Now, we apply x on g x that is we multiply x to g x then we will get x times a 0 plus a 1 x plus up to a r x to the power r and so on. This is equal to a 0 x plus a 1 x square and so on then I have got a r x to the power r. So, see now the coefficient a r becomes uh, the coefficient corresponding to x to the power r plus 1. Therefore, the corresponding discrete numeric function will be 0 a 0 a 1 and so on a r and so on where this is in the r plus 1 th position. Thus, this is nothing but S A. Similarly, we get S square A if we multiply by x square and in general if we want to find the discrete numeric function corresponding to s to the power i a by using generating function then we must multiply g x by x to the power i. So, this is i g x which will give us a 0 x to the power i plus a 1 x to the power i plus 1 plus and so on a r x to the power r plus i and so on. Now, we can also talk about the left sheet operation and we can in fact derive it starting from applying s to the power minus 1 to the discrete numeric function a. So, a is a 0 a 1 a 2 a r and so on. So, I know that s inverse a or I should I, I should not say s inverse, but probably I should say s to the power minus 1 corresponds to le one left shift it is a 1 a 2 and so on. So, the generating function g x is given by a 0 
plus a 1 x plus a 2 x square and so on up to a r x to the power r plus and so on. Now, if I multiply by x to the power minus 1 g x then I get a 0 x to the power minus 1 plus a 1 plus a 2 x plus and so on we have a r x to the power r minus 1 plus and so on and then we may like to transpose this first term to the right hand side to obtain x minus 1 g x minus a 0 x to the power minus 1 equal to a 1 plus a 2 x and so on up to a r x to the power r minus 1 and onward and the right hand side becomes Now, it is clear that the discrete numeric function corresponding to the right hand side of this identity is a 1, a 2 and so on in the r minus 1th position we have a r and move onward which is equal to s to the power minus 1 of a. Therefore, we see that x to the power minus 1 g x minus a 0 is the discrete numeric function correspond uh, sorry is a generating function corresponding to s to the power minus 1 of a. Now, what happens? if we multiply g x by x to the power minus 2. We check that this is x to the power minus 2 into g x is a 0 x to the power minus 2 plus a 1 x to the power minus 1 plus a 2 x to the power 0 plus a 3 x and so on up to a, a r x to the power r minus 2 and we move on. Therefore, we will see that transposing the first two terms of the right hand side to the left hand side and taking the common factor x to the power minus 2 out we get x to the power minus 2 g x minus a 0 minus a 1 x is equal to a 2 plus a cube x plus and so on a r x to the power r minus 1 2 and so on which is of course, the generating function corresponding to uh, the discrete numeric function s to the power minus 2 a. So, now, we have a rule the rule is 
that the generating function corresponding to s to the power minus i a is x to the power mi minus i g x minus a 0 minus a 1 x minus a 2 x square minus and so on up to minus a i minus 1 x to the power i minus 1 and it ends here. So, we have a finite series that has to be subtracted from g x and then we multiply by x to the power minus i and we obtain the generating function of s to the power minus i a. This is all about generating functions for today. As a last topic in the discussion of discrete numeric functions and the generating functions corresponding to this discrete numeric functions, we discuss the asymptotic notations. Here for convenience we will denote discrete numeric functions as usual functions. So, we denote a function f from n to r which is a discrete numeric function and we are interested in knowing the growth of f. So, f takes values f 0, f 1, f 2 so on in general let us say it takes a value f n and it goes on we would like to know about how it grows. So, we compare f to certain other functions let us say g which is also a discrete numeric function. We say that f n is equal to capital theta of g n if there are positive integers c 1 and c 2 and positive integer n 0 such that c 1 g n less than or equal to f n less than or equal to c 2 g n. For example, if g n is simply n square then this will mean that there exists positive integer c 1 c 2 and n 0 such that c 1 n square less than or equal to f n less than or equal to c 2 n square for all n greater than or equal to n 0. Here also we have to say that for all n greater than or equal to n 0. So, in language it means that 
if f is capital theta n square, then I should be able to find two constants which must not vary c 1 and c 2 and a constant n 0 all positive such that for all n greater than or equal to n 0, the value of f is bounded above by c 2 n square and bounded below by c 1 n square. There are other notations involving this idea. We say that f n is equal to b go of g n if there exists c 1, c 2 and n 0 greater than 0 all positive integers such that f n is less than or equal to uh, I am sorry we do not need two constants over here we just need c 1 and n 0. So, it is only c 1 and n 0 such that f n is c 1 n less than or equal to c 1 n for all n greater than or equal to n 0. And we say f n is equal to capital omega g n just one correction in the previous statement we have to say that this is equal to c 1 g n all right. And f n is capital omega g n if there is there exists c 1 and n 0 greater than 0 such that f n is greater than or equal to c 1 g n for all n greater than or equal to n 0. And finally, we say that f n is small o of g n if there uh, if given any constant given any constant c greater than 0 there exists n 0 greater than 0 a positive integer such that f n is less than or equal to c times g n for all n greater than or equal to n 0. It can be shown that this happens if and only if limit n tending to infinity f n by g n is equal to 0. These are the four asymptotic notations which are used very commonly to discuss the growths of discrete numeric functions.
So, in this lecture we have discussed generating functions of discrete numeric functions we have also discussed several uh, manipulative techniques of generating functions like addition scalar multiplication convolution product then shift operations on generating functions. Apart from this we have learnt how to uh, write a generating function in a closed form. So, closed form representation We have also seen in case we are given a closed form representation of a generating function, how to get the corresponding discrete numeric function and finally, we have discussed the necessary notations used to study growth of discrete numeric uh, functions, uh, these are called asymptotic notations. Among these asymptotic notations, we have discussed the most important four asymptotic notations is capital theta, big O, then we have capital omega and lastly small o. This is all for today, thank you.